Today I'm going to be giving you just really a quick overview of some of the roles that clinicians that we've worked with have identified for athletic trainers. So let's get into the meat and bones of it. Where does the athletic trainer fit into the concussion management space? We know that your roles are many. We know that you have your arms in multiple aspects of concussion management. So let's get started here and talk about baseline testing. So baseline neurocognitive testing at the school level is oftentimes managed by the athletic trainer. So you're really the gatekeeper for ensuring that your athletes or your individuals that you're testing get the best, most valid, and most reliable baseline tests. So uh, some of the clinicians that we've worked with have identified just a couple tips and tricks to help you get the best baseline tests. Number one, make sure your computer lab is set up and ready to roll. So do some testing, make sure that all of your IT stuff is up to date, make sure that you've got somebody in place testing and making sure that you can run a baseline test and that it saves beforehand. Have administrators in place that are considered stakeholders and can kind of manage your athletes. So this could be a coach is a great person to help administer the test, keep the athletes in line. This could be parents that you know just, just help to keep the situation calm and keep the baseline testing calm. The third recommendation really is just to prepare kind of an in-room speech or some sort of presentation that standardizes your testing instructions to make sure that your athletes all understand the instructions for your baseline tests. And this is really a good way to make sure that baseline testing is very much under your control. So the next thing I wanted to talk about as far as pre-seizing responsibilities for the athletic trainer is sideline evaluation. So really the athletic trainer is a major player in creating and conducting sideline evaluation. So it's extremely important before the season starts that you put together a comprehensive sideline evaluation that you're ready to use in the event of an injury. So when you're creating a sideline evaluation, the main goal is to make sure that you have a system in place that's reproducible and documentable. So this sideline evaluation could differ for every athletic trainer, but it needs to be reproducible. And you have to be able to document your findings and make sure that you're communicating those findings to the proper individuals. So this would include your parents, your coaches, as well as your athletes. Um, and the athletic trainer is really a major player in making sure that the sideline evaluation is conducted in a safe manner to make sure that the athlete is removed from play if they need to be, as well as documentable. So in that same vein, I wanted to talk a little bit about the athletic trainer's role in creating the comprehensive concussion policy. So a lot of the clinicians that we've worked with have worked with their schools, their smaller high schools, their universities to put together concussion policies that encompass a wide range of individuals and a wide range of procedures. So a couple suggestions that the clinicians that we worked with have for creating a comprehensive concussion policy is number one, first and foremost, make sure that you include any stakeholding individuals and all members of your multidisciplinary concussion management team in that policy. So people that should be included in your concussion policy would be your team physician or your neuropsychologist, any of the physicians that are managing the injury, your physical and occupational therapist to get involved if there's any rehabilitation needed, your school nurse to coordinate those academic accommodations or whatever you need to do at the school level, as well as your parents. You know, you have to identify what their role is in the policy and your coaches and your teachers, what are their roles. And again, you need to focus on your state's requirements because there are different requirements per state on who needs to be included in your policy and what needs to be included in your policy. So you as the athletic trainer have the responsibility to ensure that you're in compliance with your local and state laws. You additionally need to ensure that your policies and your procedures for what you're doing as part of your management policy are perfectly laid out. So this would include what does your preseason education look like? What does your baseline testing look like? How do you conduct a sideline evaluation? How do you conduct a comprehensive clinical evaluation in the event of an injury? What are your return to learn protocols? What are your return to play protocols? And again, these protocols differ per state, so it's important for you as the athletic trainer to keep that in mind and make sure that you're in compliance. And in that same vein with creating the policies and procedures, I'd like to talk a little bit uh, about the athletic trainer as being the school point person. The athletic trainer is really in a perfect position to coordinate referrals, which I'll talk a little bit about in a minute, as well as you know, coordinating those academic adjustments with your school nurse or your school psychologist, coordinating physical and cognitive rest with 
your coaches and your parents and ensuring that those rest protocols are followed. The athletic trainer really does serve as a great liaison between the clinicians recommending adjustments and the school staff that need to implement those adjustments. So a little bit more about coordinating referrals. So because the athletic trainer kind of stands across the fence in terms of managing concussion at the school level and managing concussion as a clinician, they really are good at coordinating all those referrals. Concussion is a very multifaceted, complicated recovery process that includes several members of the multidisciplinary team, like I mentioned, occupational therapists, physical therapists, registered nurses, the clinician managing the injury. So the athletic trainer is in a perfect position to ensure that the athlete's academic adjustments are followed, rest protocols are being followed, exertion, vestibular, visual therapy, whatever they need, ensuring that those are managed well and reducing confusion for the athlete and the parent. Okay, let's talk a little bit about physical and cognitive rest and how the athletic trainer plays into that. So along the same vein on coordinating referrals, the athletic trainer is really in a good position to ensure rest protocols are being followed. So if a clinician is recommending rest, the athletic trainer can implement that at the school level and work with the school nurse and the teachers and the faculty to ensure that that's being taken care of in a proper and safe manner. So the athletic trainer can recommend that the student go into the school nurse's office if they're getting a headache or if they're tired throughout the day. But it's important to remember that every athlete is different, every injury is different. So it's the athletic trainer's role to know the athlete's injury, know the individual injury, and ensure that rest protocols are being followed for that specific individual. And, and I'd like to talk a little bit more about academic adjustments, so I just want to go pretty briefly into that. Up to 95% of concussed athletes will have some form of informal academic adjustments. So this can include letting the student leave five or ten minutes early from class to avoid a busy hallway if they've got some residual vestibular issues putting their head down or having another student take notes for them if they have any sort of visual issues. So um, in terms of informal adjustments, like I said, up to 95% of concussed athletes returning back to school will have some sort of these adjustments. And really it's up to the athletic trainer to work with the teachers, work with the school psychologist or counselor to ensure that these are being implemented properly. Academic accommodations. Uh, which is a little bit more formal. Um, this could include a 504 plan and it's also the athletic trainer's role to ensure that documentation is included to make sure that those are taken care of properly. Academic modifications, which is considered to be the most formal form of academic adjustment. So this would include like an IEP or a situation where the student's learning regimen needs to be adjusted. And again, the athletic trainer is the really good liaison between the clinician recommending this and the school that needs to implement it and the teachers. So in terms of academic adjustments, the athletic trainer is a really good resource to ensure that those are being implemented properly and, and in a safe manner. And then finally, I wanted to talk a little bit about return to learn and play. So again, as the athletic trainer kind of bridges the gap between school and the clinicians managing the injury. They're really good at implementing some of those return to learn policies. And also, the athletic trainer is probably the primary stakeholder in ensuring proper and safe return to play. So again, every state differs on their regulations and their requirements for return to play, and it's the athletic trainer's responsibility to understand their state's requirements and ensure that return to play is done properly. And again, I can't stress this enough, Every athlete is different, every injury is different. So it's important to keep in mind uh, an individualized approach when it comes to return to play protocols. The primary goal is to keep the athlete safe and the primary goal is to ensure the gold standard for every return to play process. So the athlete being symptom free at rest, symptom free with cognitive exertion and symptom free with physical exertion a neurocognitive test that's either at or better than your baseline test results, a physical exam that's completely within normal limits, and a balance test that's completely within normal limits. So your return to play process should include these. And again, you know, every athlete is different, so it's important to put together a sport or activity specific return to play process. Not every return to play process is going to look the same. 
And as an athletic trainer, it's really your role to determine exactly what that individual athlete needs and to coordinate care properly and coordinate return to play and return to active daily living properly.